In this introductory video, we will be taking a look at chemical pollution, the sources and effects of pollution, and explain why this topic needs our attention. Chemicals are an essential part of our daily lives, with approximately 350,000 chemicals and chemical mixtures registered for production. In Europe, since 2009, around 1,700 new chemicals have been registered each year, so the number of chemicals we use continues to increase. This rise in the use of chemicals also means an increase in the numbers of substances, such as metals, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, personal care products and industrial chemicals emitted to the environment. Chemicals can enter the environment by different routes with many factors influencing them. As the environment is made up of different interlinked compartments, once released, chemicals can then move through these via various mechanisms and processes. An example of this is agricultural chemicals, such as pesticides, which can enter the environment through volatilization into the air, run off into water bodies and leaching into groundwater. Depending on their properties, some chemicals can stay in the environment for long periods of time and be transported very long distances, potentially influencing their impact on ecosystems. The Earth has nine planetary boundaries, thresholds that should not be passed if we are to prevent the collapse of our ecosystems. We have already crossed the planetary boundary for chemical pollution. Chemical pollution is adversely affecting the health of ecosystems and humans. It is estimated 9 million premature deaths occur each year as a result of pollution. That's one in six deaths worldwide. Around half of the surface waters in Europe fail to achieve good chemical status. And in a recent global monitoring study, approximately 43% of locations studied had concentrations of pharmaceuticals thought to adversely affect aquatic life. The widespread contamination of rivers and groundwaters with perfluorinated substances from their use as water repellents poses a threat to drinking water safety. In the terrestrial environment, the use of neonicotinoid pesticides is believed to have adversely affected bee populations. Pollution can also indirectly affect ecological and human health and the well-being of people and ecosystem services, including provisioning, cultural and supporting services, and regulating services such as disease control. For example, the use of the anti-inflammatory drug diclofenac decimated populations of vultures, leading to rabid dogs having more sources of food. This then led to an increase in their population, leading to more people being bitten, therefore causing more human deaths from rabies. Chemical pollution is also contributing to the antimicrobial resistance crisis. Levels of antibiotics in the environment are thought to select for resistance in bacteria, and this is believed to be contributing to the crisis, which in 2019 killed more than one million people. We urgently need to reduce the levels of pollution to below the planetary boundary threshold and protect the health of the planet. The increasing number of chemicals entering the environment, combined with their impacts, highlights the need for chemical pollution monitoring. Monitoring allows us to understand which pollutants are of most concern, which activities are most polluting and where hotspots of pollution occur. Through monitoring chemical pollution, we gain a better understanding of its effects, how to limit the impact and ultimately, how to reverse harmful trends in pollution. This video is followed by a number of videos aimed at supporting you in designing and implementing a monitoring study in either water, air or soil.